Hi, this is Dr. Felice Gersh, and I'm going to be starting in just a, maybe one minute, and we're going to talk about pregnancy and coronavirus, a topic that hasn't really been widely covered. And there's some good reasons, because the data, as you'll see, is pretty limited. So just stand by, have a cup of tea with me, and we'll talk about this topic, this really important topic for so many women, so many couples, and it's affecting just people all over the country, this concern for pregnancy and coronavirus. So just stay tuned, we'll start in a few seconds. Hi, I'm Dr. Felice Gersh, and I'm the medical director of the Integrative Medical Group of Irvine. I'm sitting here in one of my exam rooms in my office, and I want to share with you some of the data, the limited data about the impact of coronavirus COVID-19 on pregnant women and their babies. The data we have comes primarily out of China, and it is very limited. So let me share with you what we do have. The study that they did was primarily on women in the third trimester. And what they found was a very high rate of C-sections. In fact, 90% of the women did end up with cesarean sections. But on a bright note, there were no deaths among the women. There's concern about stillbirth. There's concern about preterm deliveries and other pregnancy-related complications. But overall, it seemed there was pretty good outcomes in spite of this very serious virus. <clears throat> now, what about in terms of early pregnancy, first trimester, and so forth? Well, we have almost no data, but we can look at some of the other coronaviruses that have come through but not to the extent perhaps as this coronavirus, but they were actually more severe. We look at SARS and MERS. The outcomes for pregnant women and their babies was really dire. It was really very, very dreadful with those particular versions of the coronavirus. Fortunately, the one that we have now does not seem anywhere near as dramatic in its negative impact. With MERS, for example, there was virtually 100% bad outcomes in terms of hospitalizations, preterm deliveries, even some stillbirths, and even some maternal deaths. Happily, that has not been the case with COVID-19. It's a different strain of this coronavirus, a novel coronavirus, that doesn't seem to be anywhere near as severe as the SARS and the MERS was on pregnancies. Well, let's say you are pregnant right now, and you're living in this world of great fear and concern, social distancing and so forth. What can you do as a pregnant woman to lower your risk? And do you actually have a higher risk than other women for developing problems? Well, the answer is, as I mentioned, we have little data, but in general, this is what we know about pregnancy and viral infections. Pregnant women have altered immune systems they change dramatically during pregnancy. It's not all bad because women in pregnancy tend to do very well overall, but if they get infected, they do tend to sometimes have worse outcomes. For example, women who get the flu, influenza, can have very, very dire effects on pregnant women. In the days when chickenpox was around, chickenpox could cause chickenpox pneumonia which could even be fatal in pregnant women. Pregnant women have to have an immune system that tolerates an alien growing within them. Because after all, the tissues, the genetics, the proteins that the baby, the fetus is making are different from that of the mother. It's like an organ transplant temporarily. And her immune system is modified to allow it to accept this foreign growth within her. And so that is what makes pregnant women potentially more vulnerable to infections, particularly viral infections. As well, pregnant women often, um, you know, they, they tend to like to socialize. You know, they love being with other women. And now I'm, we're telling you, if you're pregnant, you really have to stop the socializing. You have to do virtual baby showers and so forth. Now, what about doing positive actions to protect you? It turns out that the coronavirus 
works by acting on certain receptors in the body that are called angiotensin receptors. They're two. And there are certain places that these re particular receptors reside. They're in the nasopharynx, in the lungs, in the gut. Those are some of the primary sites. So what you want to do is make sure those organs are really healthy. Get an air purifier. There's some thought that that people who smoke, for example, and terrible air pollution increase the risk of severity of this infection. So please get a wonderful quality air purifier, especially for your bedroom. Make sure you eat organic foods, things like chemicals, preservatives, flavors, colorings, all those kinds of things, all the things that are in processed foods are very bad for the gut. We want to maintain a healthy gut and a healthy liver. They're finding that the gut is very much involved in a very significant percentage, and some even have liver failure. So please eat real food, lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of polyphenols and antioxidants to help maintain the health of your immune system, optimize its function, maintain a healthy gut, and then you'll take care of having good quality air. That's another thing that's actually happened. Isn't that amazing? Because people are driving less, there are fewer planes, the air quality has dramatically improved all over the world. So that may help also to slow the spread and slow the severity of this infection. Now, what about transmission to the baby? This is actually very good news. There, there are some very good studies out of China where they actually tested amniotic fluid and umbilical cord blood. There was no trace of the virus in any of those locations. They did not see what we call vertical transmission from the mother to the baby. So the mom is not giving the virus to the baby in utero. So that is very, very good. And if she should have the infection while she is pregnant, her antibodies can actually serve to help protect her baby. But if a woman is sick with the coronavirus when she gives birth, they will separate the baby from the mom. But as soon as possible, immediately if possible, you can express your milk and they will feed the baby. And as soon as your baby, you and the baby can reunite. So on balance, there is actually a lot of good news. The certain issues that faced women who had to deal with SARS and MERS, those terrible infections with the coronaviruses that hit the U.S. Um, in a very small amount, but other areas of the world in much more significant numbers. Those particular strains of coronavirus had very, very bad outcomes. The strain that we're now dealing with does not seem to be anywhere near as severe. We need to do all we can to protect you. You need to protect yourself and your baby. And here's my prediction. Things will turn out okay. Stay far away from as many people as possible. Cocoon in your home nest. Eat wonderful food and think positive thoughts. I think we'll all turn out as well as you can possibly imagine. One other thing, please try to avoid unnecessary prenatal visits. They're actually cutting down on some of the prenatal screenings to just reduce exposures within the healthcare system. So talk with your obstetrician. Decide what tests you really need, what you can maybe do without this time around, and make the best decision for yourself. So thank you for joining me. And now it's open to questions. So let's see if anyone was sending any questions. They said we're I told someone we're taking them at the end. Let's see. Can you talk a little bit about people who are trying to conceive that may not actively yet be Sure. <clears throat> well, my advice is hold off for three months. Use this next three months to just optimize your health. Eat lots of vegetables, do positive thinking, lower stress and probably wait because we don't really know where things are going. This is probably not the most optimal time to actually conceive if you can time it. You know, it's very challenging if you are older, like say you're already in your 40s, should you delay it? Well, maybe give it one month anyway. Let's just see what happens over the next month with, as far as this virus. You know, maybe the whole thing will quiet down. Let's just see where it's going before you actually commit to getting pregnant on purpose. Someone writes, to what extent shall we isolate ourselves from families, visiting grandma, uncle, cousins? I think you should isolate yourself 100% from those people in terms of in-person visits. <clears throat> this is such a critical time. We do not want you to get this infection. Even though I told you it's not, <clears throat> it does not appear 
<clears throat> excuse me, it does not appear to be anywhere near as severe as MERS and SARS. Still, there's so much we don't know about it. The studies out of China were very small. And as I mentioned, for pregnant women who were infected, 90% ended up with cesarean sections. There were some complications. So it's not like it's a free pass. It's just not as bad as SARS and MERS. So just do um, what we're doing now. Use telecommunications to communicate with the people in your life that you love. I know people who are in the service, the military, and because they're stationed and they were apart, they can't even see each other. And that's husband and wife. So just do what you can to stay connected to people you love, people in your family, but stay apart for now. Someone writes, um, can you talk on people with newborns and the virus? She has a 13 day old. Okay, so 100% you wanna keep your baby away from other people. Now, there actually have been very few serious effects when babies have gotten infected. And they actually have found though that there have been a few cases reported of babies becoming infected. Not any of them died, I'm very happy to report, or had terrible outcomes. So it's very, very bright in terms of the news for babies, but we don't want your baby to be exposed. I mean, so you and your baby, and you can't get, if you get infected, then you can't be with your baby, and your baby needs you. So you and your baby stay separate. This is just what it is. You, In fact, why would I encourage anyone with a new baby to go out into the public? Because, you know, any there's always infections out there. So the first six weeks for any new baby is best to stay apart from other people, but now more than ever. Stay home and just relax, love your baby. Someone um, asks that she suffers from dizziness um, and strange pressure in her head. Does that put her at a higher risk of contracting the virus? Okay, so I'm not capable of making medical diagnoses here, but if you're having something going on that seems new and is worrisome, please call your doctor because that is not a normal feeling. Nobody should be having strange feelings like that in their head. Um, and you know that's not one of the listed symptoms for coronavirus, but please don't ignore it. I don't know what's going on you know, just from that little bit of information. So thank you so much for joining me here today. We're going to be doing these Instagram Lives twice a week from now on. We'll let you know, follow me on Instagram, and we will tell you the topic, and we will tell you the time, and the next one will be also on a little bit of coronavirus, but we're also gonna be interspersing other topics. So stand by, we're gonna put it out very soon what the next topics will be, and we love your feedback. In fact, let me know what you want me to talk about, because I'm here for you. I want to answer your questions and serve your needs. So please join me in the very near future, and we'll have another Instagram Live, and have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay well.